you want to hear the barble, I want to talk to you about what I am sat in right now. Barabbas G-Wagon, welcome. So I'm not sure if you noticed upon startup that um, the whole car twisted. So that is a hint to how much power this car has. Now, into drive, handbrake off, conventional handbrake, no less. So just quickly, I've picked this up. You might have seen, I do the odd video with Brittle, Brittle motor cars. They uh, have some quite tasty and specialist stuff. And when I saw they got one of these in and the fact that I'd filmed with them already, I thought, you know what, I'm gonna get in touch because this is an opportunity to find out what the Barabbas G-Wagon is all about. Because let's face it, they've become this cult icon of a 4x4. They're all over the place. You've got everyone from the Chelsea Chariot Brigade to hip-hop artists and everyone in between. And I want to know what is what. So let's hop on some proper roads and find out what the G-Wagon is all about. history about the G-Wagon in the first place. Well, we can actually thank the Shah of Iran. Yep, Shah of Iran. I know you're thinking, but this is a German-made car. Well, yes it is, but back in the 70s, the Shah was actually one of the significant shareholders in Mercedes, and he thought it would be a great idea if uh, the team could put their heads together and build a vehicle that was suitable for military application, which would make sense. Well, it looks like an armored personnel carrier, right? It, it really does assume a tank-like status. And the reason for that is because it was literally designed to be at the receiving end of bullets. Just listen to the engine. <laughs> well, it doesn't hang around. <laughs> <laughs> Although it has all the steering feel of a bowl of treacle. <laughs> I'd go so far as to say it's actually unpredictable. But despite this thing having 23 inch wheels on it, ride quality isn't quite as bad as I expected. It's no Rolls Royce, but when you look at this thing, observationally, you can't help but think it has the aerodynamics of a house brick. It's riding 23 inch rims with low profile tires. It's not exactly the last word in dynamics. But what do we have here? Well, it's important for me to mention that this is the G700 inspired. Inspired because aesthetically, externally, it is identical to the Brabus G700. Uh, that's because it is a Brabus kit. However, this is running the standard G63 engine, meaning it's uh, only pushing out 571 horsepower, sir. I mean, like, when I do that, it sounds fabulous. <laughs> but when I do that, when I depress this throttle, I d I'm not thinking, yeah, what this needs is 700 horsepower. That's what, that's what this needs, 700 horsepower. It, it's plenty enough, particularly because the nature that you assume, the demeanor that you assume when you get in this isn't, I'm going to exploit all 700 horsepower of this. You just want to ball about. You get in it and I got to admit, when you're in it, you do feel pretty cool. <laughs> like, and this thing is full on stealth pack. It is black on black. Uh, there are some pretty subjective styling cues on this, namely uh, the Brabus jewelry, which is the iridescent blue LEDs shrouding every possible corner of this thing, even on the outside. Now I'm all for mood lighting on the inside, but uh, when you look like a cheap Christmas tree on the outside, it's not always what you want. <laughs> However, I suppose if you're spending a hundred thousand pounds on a body kit, yes, you heard me right, one hundred thousand pounds, sir, uh, I guess you're better having uh, some sort of signal to indicate that you are in fact rocking a kit of uh, such significance. But of course, while the exterior is cool, majority of the time with these cars, you're gonna spend it on the inside. I gotta say, it's plush. It is nice in here. I love this diamond stitch quilted breathable leather. And for me, I think it ties in the whole package nicely. Ooh, as does that. <laughs> you don't need any 
more power. You do not need any more power in this thing. I mean, for a truck, it sounds amazing. It goes a plenty. And let's face it, the majority of the time, if this is your daily, which I think most people would use this for, all you want is that. You just want that grunt. You want to know that you're in something cool, you're in something abnormal, you're in something special. Ah, oh, it's lovely. It's got that beautiful barble that you want from that AMG engine. God knows what 700 horsepower would feel like in this thing, but you honestly don't need it. I think with a lot of these things, and if you watch my channel regularly, you know, for me, well, it doesn't matter what you drive, it's all about putting a smile on your face. You saw within the first few minutes of me driving this thing and depressing the accelerator. <laughs> Listen to it. <laughs> yes, it's completely nuts. I mean, it sounds fantastic. If you just listen to the barbell of this because it is a, a c63 engine 571 horsepower the overrun's beautiful it's got a really nice barbell about it now uh richard brittle who who owns this car currently or shall i say is the purveyor of this uh road going tank said to me that and we're of a similar mindset he said you know a few days ago i borrowed the new uh, bentley Bentayga, he said, and it is phenomenal. And certainly on paper, it is better than this thing in every single way. He says, but I did my journey to and from work and I stepped out of this quarter of a million pound car without really thinking twice about it. And I completely get that. They're, they're almost too good. You know, they waft along and it's serene and stunning and they're fantastically beautiful on the inside. But you don't get there with any sort of sense of occasion now you're probably thinking do you want that out of your daily driver maybe not but if you're watching this channel you probably do you're probably a petrol head and you're thinking you know what to be fair if I was spending that kind of coin I would definitely want to know about it when I stepped out so I think it might actually be easier for me to tell you what I don't like about it because to be honest and I'm gonna if I were the first one to put my hand up and say I'm actually surprised and I don't dislike this thing as much as I thought I would. I mean, from the outset, it just looks like a big, heavy, expensive tank. And for what it's worth, ultimately, I guess, to a degree, it kind of is. But there's something about it. There's a lot of character about this thing. The approach to it makes me smile. The way it sounds makes me smile. The way it looks makes me smile. The way it handles doesn't. <laughs> I would say... That's probably the overriding thing here. The way it handles is a shame because it could be a pretty compelling package. Now, together with the handling, the other thing I don't like is the price. It's, even in this one, this isn't the full Brabus spec. This is predominantly the aesthetics of what a Brabus 700G wagon would look like. If you wanted a the full engine work as well. I sh I'm not entirely sure, but this is 250. 320 maybe? 320 grand? Uh, I, I just, I don't know. It's, it's hard to justify that on something that doesn't do something much better than the competition, but it does have the exclusivity factor. And I'm finding that in markets like this, for owners, for prospective owners, and for people that actually are fortunate enough to own one, that is valuable enough to justify it. I mean, all round, it is a really great package. It's more comfortable than I thought. It's running 23 inch rims. I mean, you know, you, you can't really poke it too hard for not being the last word in dynamics because what do you expect? It's not trying to be that, but it is trying to be cool. And I think it's nailed it.
funny way of summarizing this car. It's from a very niche standpoint. Well, I've been very fortunate enough to have done Gumball for the last several years. And when you tell someone that your support car, your camera car is a G-Wagon, they're always like, now that's cool. There's no real words why this thing is baller. But the reaction you get from this being your support car is you don't get that reaction when, when you're driving any other 4x4 four four really. It seems to have this, this kind of status that is hard to put your finger on, but described in the right context, it's like, yeah, that thing is bang on the money. As always guys, thanks for watching. See you next time.